On behalf of the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative community, we endorse these videos. So I'm uh, the Assistant Vice President for Information Technology for Digital Education at Marist College. Marist is a four-year private liberal arts institution in Poughkeepsie, New York. And so at Marist, I oversee our academic technology office, where we both do technical support for faculty, uh, instructors, and students <coughs> who are uh, uh, using our instructional technology both in the classroom as well as fully online. Um, I'm also part of the President's Cabinet, so I'm involved in a lot of the strategic planning activities that happen around instructional technology for the whole institution. So Marist is, I think, an uh, interesting place in that as a liberal arts institution, at least in the United States, uh, are typically involved in large-scale technology projects, but it's been, over the last 25 years, a major differentiator for Marist. So uh, technology is part of our strategic plan, and it's a big emphasis there. And as part of that, we're always trying to experiment with whatever the new latest trend in technologies might be, not necessarily because we're going to adopt them for sure, but it's part of our uh, community kind of organizational learning process so that we can make informed decisions for the whole institution about, is this really a long-term technology that's gonna have a major impact on higher education, or, or maybe not? And so going back about seven or eight years ago, we began to notice this emerging area of analytics in higher education, first maybe on the business side, and then started to see its implications for teaching and learning. And that really got us interested enough that we decided we should begin to kind of experiment and explore the technology. So uh, similarly in, in the sense that you know, Marist always likes to uh, explore and be part of early emerging instructional technologies as the Sakai open source learning management system first kind of began as a project, uh, Marist really got involved um, not in the very first year but I think in year two of that, that project back in 2005. Um, and we adopted Sakai, it's, uh, we rolled it out as our primary, it's our only learning management system for the whole institution. Um, and then I got involved in the Sakai community um, and ultimately uh, ended up on the Sakai Foundation Board of Directors. Uh, the connection to Aperio is uh, Perio, sorry, uh, Sakai then merged with another open source higher education foundation called JSIG about three or four years ago to form the Aperio Foundation. Um, I was then on the board of Aperio for uh, a couple of years after that merger. Yeah, so when uh, we, we, Maris received a uh, funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through the EDUCAUSE Next Generation Learning Challenges Program um, to again explore uh, this area of learning analytics. Um, and we did that um, initially uh, more of a, a, a project at the institution level, but began to share what we were doing with other Perio uh, institution and members and then began to find that there are other institutions like University of Amsterdam and, and others who are also exploring aspects of learning analytics. Um, and so it was just natural for us to uh, come together uh, to form and help form a, a community within a perio that was kind of focused on this emerging technology. Uh, a hundred percent open, I think, is how we like to describe it. Um, we really believe strongly that uh, higher education needs to uh, adjust and change in fairly dramatic ways uh, over the next five or ten years and even further out. And we can't do that alone as Marist. We can't do that uh, alone in New York State or, or by ourselves in the United States. This needs to be a global collaboration effort across higher education around the world. Um, and uh, you can't do that if things are closed and locked up behind either proprietary licenses or closed groups. And so that's why I really believe 100% open um, is, is really important to the future of higher education. 
So I really see us in the early days of learning analytics still. It's obviously getting a huge amount of attention in higher education. A lot of people really want to be implementing it. I almost see it as the same place we were in maybe 1998, 99 with learning management systems. Uh, many of us in higher education knew that this was going to be a very important, strategically significant technology back then. None of us could have predicted uh, that it would help facilitate things like distance education and MOOCs and a lot of other big things that have happened more recently. I think the same is true for learning analytics. Uh, we all seem to have a sense that this is going to be very strategically important to education. Exactly where it ends up 10, 15 years from now, I don't know anybody has you know, insights uh, yet on that. Sure, well, as long as you don't come back 15 years from now and show me this video and hold me to it, I'll give you my best thoughts. But you know, I really think the ability for learning analytics to uh, do things like improve the curriculum and, and teaching process that we have today by creating a feedback loop so instructors can really begin to have make data-driven decisions about what activities, what content seem to work the best to reach the learning objectives of my course. I think that's going to have broad implications. Uh, areas of adaptive learning systems, I think, are also, these are even newer, I think, than, than other learning analytic systems, but are going to hold the potential to personalize learning in a way that, in some cases, might even rival for, let's say, basic skill instruction, what human tutors can do today. I think if you look at the challenges in higher education in terms of improving the quality of learning, reducing the cost of delivering education, uh, this technology has broad implications for those. So exactly what those things are 15 years from now, I, I probably can't say for sure, but the ability for this technology to help us change education in a way that will be really strategically important for our future, that I, I have a strong uh, certainty about. Yeah, and I think, you know, higher education is a bit unique in that although we compete in some sense of, you know, students, we want you know, students to come to our institution, obviously, maybe than others, we also are colleagues across the whole industry. And I think the ability for us to collaborate and share experiences with such a new and dynamic and quite honestly, sometimes challenging technology is, is really an accelerator for us all to be able to realize the benefits of this technology in a shorter period of time. So right now the initiative is working to build out, in a sense, a modular based platform for learning analytics. And there's five major components to that platform. Collections uh, component, which is using open standards to bring data together from different uh, systems, learning systems. A storage component that's using the learning record store standard where that information is stored. An analysis component, this is kind of the brains of the system where all the heavy duty um, analytics takes place. The results of that analysis then gets pushed out to the final two components, a communications component, which is often a dashboard kind of technology, and then uh, intervention and advising systems where instructors, uh, advisors can then follow up and help students. Uh, and you can go here to get further information about those. Um, I'm Gabor Kishmihok. I'm coordinating, uh, first of all, the EduWorks project, which is uh, a big uh, 3.8 million euro European Union funded Marie Curie initial train work. Our objective there is to train 12 PhD students and three postdocs in the area of labor market matching processes from five different angles. One is education, another one is human resource management, labor economics, sociology of occupations, and the last one is knowledge manage management. I believe all these five disciplines are crucial and important if we want to, to understand more about those processes. Yeah, so learning analytics is part of this EdWorks project. One of our PhD students we supervise um, dealing with learning analytics. And the data, what we can collect, collect about learning and what we can use to predict future employment or future possibilities of uh, employment on the labor market is 
is great, uh, like uh, it's full of great opportunities. And we believe this is a, a must, uh, we should do this, uh, we should be on this horse, otherwise, uh, yeah, someone else will do it. Oh, there are a number of opportunities. So the first one, uh, for instance, is that we can, hopefully, we will be able to predict uh, individual performance on the labor market based on edu performance in education. Then another uh, opportunity is to reduce a skill, uh, skill mismatch. So basically that means people will be able to work where they can perform the best. It's also important to reduce youth unemployment. Nowadays, uh, I just came from a conference uh, yesterday and um, they said that in certain parts of Europe, the youth employment is above 25%, which is huge. All these people are, these young people are very well educated. Still, they cannot find a, a, a proper place in the labor market. How come this is possible? I believe learning analytics or educational data uh, has part of the answer. Yeah, the Center of Job Knowledge Research uh, is basically a small research group within the Amsterdam Business School. We are part of the uh, HRM OB group and we are running a number of projects uh, in relation to learning analytics, in relation to uh, labor market uh, uh, matching processes, in relation to knowledge management and human resource management. One of the projects is Edworks I was talking about, another project is UFA Inform, uh, probably Stefan, my colleague, uh, have been talking, has been talking about that. And uh, we have a number of other projects uh, where we are trying to uh, investigate the role of knowledge in the knowledge society in relation to occupations. So what, uh, for instance, when it comes to nursing and caretaking jobs, what is the role of knowledge uh, within those jobs, how to utilize knowledge in recruitment, in selection, in uh, training, how to certify knowledge, how to make sure that your employees meet uh, the standards of your organization in terms of knowledge, in terms of skills uh, they require. These are all very interesting questions and problems. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is our core business, if you like. I think so. I think data, data science and education, that's the future. So right now we are having educational structures which were invented more than 100 years ago. And obviously, they do not really reflect the society we are living in now. They do not reflect the data society. They do not reflect uh, the fact that knowledge is not the monopoly of universities or anyone anymore. And that requires substantial change also in the way we teach. Also, the, in, in the organizations, they uh, uh, are busy with teaching. It's, we live in a very exciting times. I believe these changes are, will be on one hand painful, but on the other hand, uh, we simply we, we cannot hide away. We must uh, do these changes. We must adapt. Organizations must adapt. Otherwise, the society will uh, have uh, substantial problems, like youth unemployment. So all these signals are, all these symptoms are already there. Youth unemployment, skill set, uh, uh, skill set. Skills uh, mismatching, uh, the, 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 the is uh, getting uh, wider and wider and education has to find an answer. I believe traditional education cannot really answer these challenges. Definitely, I would invest more in analytics related uh, uh, experiments, learning analytics. I would definitely try to put more emphasis on privacy uh, issues, 
So what is data? How, how data is related to individuals? What, what are the responsibilities of the stakeholders within this business? So what is the responsibility of the individual? What is the responsibility of the organization? What is the responsibility of the society, of the policy makers when it comes to data, educational data, data ownership, data security, information security, and so on? The, these are crucial problems and fundamental problems in this uh, society. So this is one thing I would definitely advocate. The other thing is finding out how to uh, be more responsive to the society and uh, the needs and the requirements coming from the society. And this is, this is a very controversial topic because on one hand I believe an organization like a university might be too big to answer these questions or to be responsive or adaptive enough. But maybe there is a, a structure there which delegates this responsibility back to the teachers. Somehow force the teachers to be responsive, force the teachers to be open towards the society and see what's going on out, out there and transform the way they teach and what they teach, what is relevant to, to the young people. For more information, please visit the EdWorks website. My name is uh, Stefan Moll. I'm uh, um, an assistant professor at the Amsterdam Business School at the Department of Human Resource Management and Organizational Behavior. And uh, I'm also the chair of the focus group Learning Analytics. So I sort of uh, fell into the focus group Learning Analytics uh, some years back. Um, essentially, as part of the EdWorks project, uh, we were set to uh, host a PhD candidate. And uh, that being the case, I wanted to explore within the University of Amsterdam what the learning analytics uh, landscape looks like. And um, that's how I, I came into contact with uh, Alan Berg and Sayo Dijkstra, who uh, had at that time uh, a sort of pitch to the uh, expertise group education a proposal um, uh, to basically facilitate uh, learning analytics. And that proposal um, had led to the uh, reservation of 150,000 uh, uh, euros on the, on the budget. Um, but um, there were still some reservations within the expertise group education as to how we should move forward with this uh, very complex uh, uh, topic. Uh, so together with uh, representatives of uh, various faculties who are also represented in this uh, focus group, we uh, uh, wrote a proposal which was uh, subsequently uh, granted. So basically once we uh, were uh, granted this, this budget, uh, we uh, had the task within the focus group learning analytics to sort of determine how we would uh, spend this money to uh, advancing learning analytics within the University of Amsterdam. And um, it's been a pretty tough uh, uh, process. We, we face several uh, challenges or, or crisis, if you will, uh, um, in, in sort of defining the territory of the work that we wanted to, to engage with. So in the end, the, uh, the structure that we came up with is one of uh, eight pilots. Um, much of the discussion that we were having was going on about whether to build um, uh, generically or to, to build kind of with a top-down approach or to uh, have a bottom-up approach in which uh, different pilots would uh, yield um, uh, uh, results that might be, uh, then be scaled to, uh, to the entire university. Uh, so what we ended up with as part of the UVA Inform project is uh, eight pilots. Um, one of them was focused on, on building a more uh, generic infrastructure called a learning record store in which um, uh, data from various data sources within the university uh, uh, can be brought together so as to facilitate learning analytics. And uh, seven other uh, pilots uh, focused on various aspects of uh, learning analytics. So at the Faculty of Economics and Business, um, uh, we uh, decided to, to uh, um, invest our time and effort in the development of a, a goal-setting um, uh, application. Uh, the idea there is um, that I think much of the field of learning analytics is, is 
um, sort of premised on the idea that the data that universities harbor about students are uh, um, contain valuable information as to, as to what they are learning. And I sometimes doubt this. So what we wanted to do with this uh, goal setting application is to tap into learning as it actually takes place online and offline. So specifically what we wanted to do is to encourage uh, students to set goals against course requirements and to then uh, assess their progress towards those goals by having them update uh, the status of the goal and, and the, the deadline that uh, the goal had. So the app is basically equipped to, to send students um, reminders when uh, a self-imposed deadline is, is upcoming. And with that, we hope to, to gain insight also in offline uh, learning behaviors, if you will. Up until this point, we've, we've carried out one small-scale pilot, and I think uh, due to some technical difficulties and, and some um, uh, uh, issues around gaining consent and, and things like that, um, we uh, were not able to collect as much data as we had intended. So for the future, what we have in mind is that um, uh, we want to um, uh, run the pilot in other courses, both within the University of Amsterdam, but we're also uh, seeking collaborations uh, with the University of New South Wales, um, where they are interested in also scaling this uh, uh, goal-setting application to uh, their institutional context. So I think my advice would be um, sort out the data governance from the get-go. Uh, so start worrying about how uh, uh, students' rights will be uh, dealt with, how students' privacy will be um, uh, um, uh, handled, and also um, the ethical ramifications of any uh, learning analytics type projects that are, that are going to be uh, uh, conducted. Um, I also think there's a lot to be said for data centralization, uh, so the idea that you uh, bring together data from disparate sources or data silos within the university to a single place so as to facilitate um, uh, learning analytics. And uh, finally, I think um, uh, there's a lot to be said for um, uh, engaging in international collaborations because there are a lot of standards being developed internationally that uh, might be adopted and it would save one from uh, reinventing the, the wheel. So there's uh, uh, three uh, resources that I would like to uh, point viewers to. Uh, one is the focus group uh, learning analytics. The second is the um, uh, Aperio Foundation. And for those people who are interested in learning more about our goal setting interface, um, there is a LAC paper that has been published in 2014. I am Marieke de Wit. I'm working at SurfNet in the Learning Analytics project, which is uh, a part of the um, uh, personalized education program within SurfNet. And in our project, we are uh, trying to help institutions um, to solve the generic uh, problems with learning analytics, like uh, the didactics, the architectures, um, and so on. A SURF is a collaboration organization for higher education and research in the Netherlands and our aim is to help uh, institutions uh, to improve uh, the education or research uh, with uh, the help of IT. As a SURFnet we work uh, closely together with a special interest group uh, for learning analytics. Uh, together we write uh, on reports like uh, didactic interventions or architecture or data or, um, and together we develop the plan for, uh, for every year what, uh, which ac activities we should do um, with and for our institutions. Then we will do some work on uh, institutional readiness and visit some institutions uh, and see how far they are uh, with learning analytics and what their challenges and opportunities are uh, on that topic. Um, furthermore, we will uh, do some pilots on uh, learning analytics architectures together with institutions. Um, and we will do an investigation to the um, 
uh, educational effectiveness of learning analytics together with some people in the, in the field. And that are the main topics for 2016. And for more information on learning analytics, you can check our website. Well, I'm Nils Siemens, I'm uh, working at the Hogeschool van Amsterdam, uh, University for Applied Sciences Amsterdam. And uh, I'm a product leader for learning analytics at the Hogeschool. Uh, I'm an educational consultant at the Hogeschool and last year I was the product leader for uh, learning analytics. And I have an educational background as a teacher, as trainer and I did education studies. It's, it's a very good development for higher education in general because, well, uh, students are doing more things in electronic environments. Students have a lot of responsibility to form their own uh, study habits, uh, have a lot of responsibility to do it in a, uh, at a proper speed. And of course, they have a, a great deal of responsibility for their devel development for their uh, en entrance in the workplace. And learning analytics is one of the ways to help students in that way. And the second thing uh, is because, well, education is under the loop. Um, I think we can use learning analytics to uh, take care for uh, better higher education. I think because the subject of learning analytics is quite a uh, challenge to do it on your own, to do it in a small uh, team. And that's the reason why I think community is very important to share the knowledge, make use of other uh, uh, of the knowledge of other people who are working at the same problem or who are working on different problems. Uh, we will encounter somewhere in the near future. especially the knowledge which is needed for learning analytics, uh, both on the sides of teachers and other support personnel and on the central level. Uh, the technical skills, well, I'm not very much into the deep technical uh, details of learning analytics, but I can talk about them and I can explain them to other people. But especially my knowledge is on the educational side from an educational policy standpoint and from educational practice standpoint. And all these three kinds of knowledge help to do learning analytics in a good way. For more information I refer to My name is Alan Berg. I'm the Program Manager for Learning Analytics at the University of Amsterdam. As from a couple of days ago, I'm a PhD candidate for Learning Analytics. I'm uh, the co-chair of a special interest group at uh, SURF for Learning Analytics, and I am one of the coordinators within the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative. I, I uh, had a friend who had a drink with me and he explained his motivation for working with learning analytics and I endorse that and I'm going to steal it, uh, which is I work with learning analytics because I want to make photographs of classes of happy students. That's my motivation for learning analytics. Uh, sometimes working with IT is a little bit abstract and you can't see the impact. Uh, learning analytics, you can pretty much see the impact of what you're doing. The University of Amsterdam is not special. There's other universities that are ahead of us or have other requirements. Working in the community allows us to accelerate where we are, allows us to divide and conquer over a very wide problem uh, range and to, to avoid risk because other people would have, part of my language, screwed up in the past and we can learn from that and avoid the obvious mistakes. And at the same time, uh, we can uh, generate new ideas because we're building uh, a multidisciplinary team that's distributed around the world and is involved in different uh, organisational cultures. So I'm the Programme Manager for Learning Analytics at UVA 
uh, but I don't have the resources to manage my program. So I am saying what I would like as program manager, but not what I can achieve uh, as part of a team. But what I would like to see in the near future is a faculty level sandbox where we can provide all the services for one faculty so that we can find out what services are strong uh, and which services are not of any use to the students. And then later on, when we've got our data governance sorted out, actually expand that for the whole university, then the whole Amsterdam region, and then for the whole of Holland. So I, we kind of have a strategy on that. The second leg is to actually understand uh, the culture uh, and the technical uh, level of development we have. And that will require a comprehensive survey of all the faculties. And from that, we can work out how to focus our resources. Data governance, the control of the data so that we behave ethically, legally, uh, and within the uh, frameworks of the business processes here. Two, the uh, need for very highly technical skills uh, to maintain and uh, learning analytics infrastructure and also understand which infrastructure we need to build. And the third one is organisational culture, and that is the most dangerous one to talk about, but the not invented here syndrome uh, has occurred a number of times. My name is Tore Hul. I'm uh, from Oslo uh, University College of Applied Sciences. Um, mainly I've been working with LACE project the last few years, um, doing stuff around interoperability and, uh, and data sharing. That's been my main interest uh, and, and my main role in the project. What I've been doing is, uh, while thinking deeply, you might say, around uh, data sharing, the issues of privacy and, and uh, data ownership and uh, consent and all this, these issues have been uh, quite a lot of my, my, my interest. And uh, what is special about these questions is how do you turn these kind of soft requirements into hard requirements for, 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 for tools and, and technologies. And that's been uh, really interesting because it's not, you, you, you don't see much of that in, in, in the current thinking in, in, uh, in uh, neither in the, the standards community or in the, the research community. It's uh, so many uh, broad questions when it comes to learning analytics because you you, 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 you have to answer what is learning all about, what is uh, and the institution that, that provides learning, what's, what, what's their goal and, 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 and meaning. So there are lots of very broad questions that you have to discuss in order to, to be able to do uh, sensible choices when it comes to technology, for instance. So these broader discussions, you, you need to have it some community. You can't just leave it to some kind of leader or, or management to, to, to answer. LACE is a European project that's uh, been supported and, and initiated by the, Euro uh, the European Commission. Uh, it's a support and coordination action, but, uh, but simply it's, it's, it's uh, a community building uh, endeavour uh, we have been uh, creating a lot of, of us, a lot of discussions, a lot of reports, a lot of blog posts and, and a, a lot of activities within this field of learning analytics. So it's, it's basically trying to build a community on learning analytics. And um, it's uh, a project that's, that will end, but uh, I think we have uh, formed a basis for, for, for a, a good discussion on learning analytics in Europe. And if you need more information about LACE, go to 